This time last year, it was full scale. There were missiles, there were tanks coming down from the north, there were paratroopers from Russia who were landing nearby Kyiv. The siege of this city was being uh, started this time last year. Then very quickly, they pushed them back within weeks. And now we hear from people that, yes, they were terrified back then. They did not know whether their capital or their country would be standing. 365 days later, it is. And today we had a press conference with President Zelensky. And I got to ask him a question about how long he thought this war would take. Mr. President, I'm interested in the timeline today on the anniversary you spoke to your own forces and you called for victory within this year. You have heard the Western friends, your partners, talk about as long as it takes. You know that the Russian leader believes that time is on his side. Why do you think that it's possible by the end of the year and how do you assess the meaning of as long as it takes from your Ukrainian perspective? Thank you for the question. Thank you for the question. Indeed, I want to very much. If each of us, each partner, and we in our country, if we stay as one fist, one strong fist, and work towards victory, this is a victory of values. If they stick to their words, to their terms, and it's not just blah, 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 I believe in it. We have been partners, strong partners, and there is evidence to that. If we all do our important homework, victory will be inevitable. I am certain there will be victory. So, Brianna, last year the, the watchword was weapons. We need weapons to defend ourselves. This year, they say, it's going to be speed. We need them quickly in order to be able to actually launch counteroffensives, regain territory, and somehow get to the bargaining table in a position of strength so that they can have negotiations to end this war from a position of strength. They will not surrender and they will not take Russia's terms right now, they say. Brianna? All right, Christian Amanpour, live in Kyiv. Thank you. Our correspondents and experts are standing by with more on this. I want to start with you, General Wesley Clark. In a new article, you write, along with six other former NATO Supreme Allied commanders, quote, now is the time for America and its allies to dig deeper, to get Ukraine what it needs to win and succeed. Uh, and certainly this is something we heard Christian talking about that the Ukrainians are calling for. What do America and its allies need to do and how could it change the outcome of this war? Well, the outcome of this war is probably going to be decided at a negotiation, but the negotiation outcome will be reflecting the battlefield conditions. Ukraine needs uh, the wherewithal to put Crimea under threat. That means getting through the land bridge, threatening to overrun Crimea, Putin will come to the table. But to do that, they've asked for 300 to 500 tanks, another 500 pieces of artillery. They need fighter aircraft. They need attack helicopters. And um, for whatever reason, uh, and long-range missiles, for whatever reason, we're not giving them that. So um, what we're heading toward is some kind of a uh, bleeding-off stalemate in which we I guess we think we're going to get at the bargaining table what we didn't get on the battlefield. And uh, history shows that's unlikely. You know, Jim, we know that Putin thinks time is to his advantage. He's yeah. trying to wait out the West. Now you have this new intel that China is considering, at least thinking about, providing drones and ammunition to Russia. What are you learning? Well, the concern is, and drones could be impactful, ammunition as well, because Russia has had trouble uh, getting ammunition as it continues a, a, an intense artillery battle, really, on that eastern front. Uh, drones as well. We've seen the impact of Iranian-made drones there in terms of helping Russia with its air war on civilian targets across the country. So the biggest concern from the U.S. and, and Pentagon perspective is that China's help will lengthen the war. It, it'll give Russia what it needs now, particularly what it's short of now, uh, in terms of ammunition. The, the other piece of that is, is, is more broad, and that is that you already have a war here that is, in effect, uh, to some degree, a proxy war uh, between the U.S. and its allies and Russia. You, you, you hear Western officials don't want to describe it that way, but you have the U.S. and its allies on one side arming Ukraine, and you have Russia on the other side. It's invaded Ukraine. With China deciding to provide lethal assistance to Russia, you would, you would now have three superpowers, in effect, involved in the largest land war in Europe since World War II. 
and, and that is a prospect that speaks to the, the, the broader conflict going on between these superpowers, really on a number of fronts around the globe, uh, could lengthen this con conflict and also adds a risk of escalation beyond the borders of Ukraine. Caitlin, you had a really interesting interview with Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin about all of this. Can you tell us what he told you? Yeah, you, this intelligence that they've talked about, that China is potentially preparing to do this, that they're considering doing it, they've cautioned to say that they have not made a decision yet. But it obviously raises the question to, to what Jim was laying out there, which is what are the repercussions if China does actually take this step? We know what the consequences would be, what it would mean on the battlefield, but what would it mean for China? And this is what Defense Secretary Austin told me. I think China, it would be a very, very ill-advised uh, step for China to take. So. Would it significantly help Russia, though, if they did add that? You know, how much how much of a blow would that be for the Ukrainians if Russia starts getting that kind of assistance from China? Well, you know, again, I don't want to get into hypotheticals, but it, it's it's clear that if uh, China has a lot of capability in terms of munitions and weapons, and if they uh, if they provide the uh, su you know substantial uh, support to Russia, it prolongs the conflict. And obviously, that is the concern there that it could prolong the conflict. And Austin told me, Brianna, that he, that the U.S. has been delivering warnings to China, basically telling them not to provide lethal assistance to, to Russia in this battle in Ukraine, in this war in Ukraine. Uh, but one thing we should note is that Austin himself is not delivering those messages because he's actually not spoken to his Chinese counterpart in months. They tried to speak after the U.S. downed that Chinese spy balloon. The Chinese, his Chinese counterpart, the foreign minister, did not take that call. And he said they actually have not spoken in months, something that is obviously concerning that the you know Pentagon chief cannot get his counterpart in China on the phone, not for lack of try trying, but simply because they're not picking up. Yeah, sour relations indeed there. And, and Jill, Ukraine's head of military intelligence says that Russia's goal, as uh, they see it, is to capture all of the Donetsk and Luhan Luhansk regions by the end of March. Even if Russia can accomplish that, do you think that that would satisfy Vladimir Putin? I think you have to ask, Brianna, what would satisfy Vladimir Putin? And, the, you know, if, if they really did take Luhansk and Donetsk, and that was kind of the original idea that Putin had, maybe he could spin it and say, you know, we have these regions. But I somehow doubt that that would be the end of it, because even if they had those, I, I firmly believe that they would want, Putin would continue to want to take over the entire country or control it in some fashion. Now, that could be, um, you know, having a sphere of influence. And that was his original idea, take Kiev, uh, you know, decapitate the, the country and influence it, take it over. So I do not believe, sadly, that he's going to be satisfied with that. And there are other things that he can do. If he had those two areas, he could try to undermine the rest of Ukraine, or he could create trouble in the neighborhood. And that is already, we're looking at Moldova and other places where he could do that. Right now, General, we're seeing Russia continuing to shell across the east and the south. The Wagner Group claims to have taken full control of a suburb outside of Bakhmut. What will you be watching for here in the coming weeks? So the question is, how effective will the Ukrainians be at, at moving into the second line of defense and, and inflicting casualties and slowing the Russian rate of advance? So for this to work out on the battlefield, uh, Brianna, there's got to be a holding in action in Donbass, and the Ukrainians have to be able to create and maintain their mobile strike force brigades that they'll use to go south, apparently. That's the plan. And uh, the Russians want to put so much pressure on the Ukrainians that they can't maintain the integrity of their offensive force. So that's what we're watching for. Can the Ukrainians hold in Donbass? Can we give them enough ammunition, enough artillery? And then is there going to be enough left over to make that counteroffensive thrust toward Crimea that would bring a successful negotiation? Jim, we're also watching tanks, right? This first delivery of Leopard tanks from Poland uh, just arrived in Ukraine. American Abrams tanks will take much, much longer, according to military officials, maybe next year, well into next year even. Is this going to be enough to make a difference? Well, the aim, to General Clark's point, is to give Ukrainian forces an offensive strike capability, in effect. And, and you've seen this with Bradley fighting vehicles that are already going in there, as well as 
European versions of those. Now you have uh, German-made Leopard tanks and Abrams tanks to follow to give them the ability not just to hold territory, but to punch through, as General Clark was saying, those lines to gain back territory in the east. And they have the ambition as well of taking back Crimea. Uh, when you speak to Ukrainian officials, they believe they can do this, and they can do this in the coming months. Uh, you had the Ukrainian defense minister speaking today about the possibility of, of winning this war, including taking back Crimea this year. Now, Ukrainians, they're, they're confident in their abilities, and they've got a year of you know, incredible gains and, and defense uh, to work on. Uh, I would say that, that U U.S. officials at this point are, I don't want to say more pessimistic, but perhaps more realistic about how quickly they can gain back, particularly when you look at Crimea, given the importance that Russia places on that. But these weapons are going there for a reason, and that is because it's not just Ukrainian intention, but also the U.S. U.S. intention to give them the ability to take back territory and not just defend it.